We're taking a look at some of the activity in the crypto space because I think really Bitcoin grabs all of the attention really following the the US election. You take a look at some of the gains though we've had across the landscape and yeah, Bitcoin's risen around 46 or 47 percent. But that line in white there is Cardano, which is actually far outpaced it. It's a gain of nearly 100 percent since the vote back in early November. So the reason for that, of course, we know Doge, for instance, has really risen. That's the Elon Musk link. The reason Cardano perhaps is rising or one of the factors being attributed to it is because the founder of the token, Charles Hoskinson. What's up, Ada Nation? A welcome to Dat Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. I'm your host here, Fareed. As a part of today's video, we're breaking down the macro markets, looking at Bitcoin, which is at $99,000 per Bitcoin, in addition to the fact that aid is officially broken over a dollar. Now, with that, there's also some pretty big news with Charles appearing on national television. We've also got him heading over to D.C. in order to meet meet with lawmakers and um, some of the top Republicans ahead of the presidential election or the presidential change which should be taking place in early January. Without any further ado, let's jump right on in here. If it's your first time stopping by, my goal is to help you find your footing here within this blockchain and crypto space, focusing on the macro as well as the ever-changing Cardano ecosystem. So if you appreciate content like this, please make sure to smash that thumbs up on the way in. I definitely do appreciate it. If it's your first time stopping by the channel, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and leave those down below. Now, if you want to take your support a step further, I am a single stake pool operator contributing to the DAP Central stake pool, which is stake pool ticker DAPP. Consider delegating if you'd like to show the channel support. Without any further ado, let's jump right on in here. We've got Cardano officially trading at a dollar and 13 cents. Now, what I want to do is just take a look at some of the potential price targets here. As we can see, Um, Price has really been respecting some of these additional ranges that we've sort of drawn out here on a horizontal scale. And if we just sort of zoom out here, we'll see that these are typically um, node areas where there's been a lot of trading volume or some pretty big reversals in Cardano's price action. So I'm actually going to make this just a little bit bigger here. Hopefully that helps you guys there from a viewing standpoint. But as we can see here, the lows during the bear market at around 25 cents. And where we currently stand, that's a 350% gain from the lows of the bear market. It's crazy how quickly crypto is able to move. And if we just take a look here at the most recent uh, price action days, this was the low at around 33 cents on election night. And we can see that in the short span of 17 days, Cardano has now risen over 240%. What's amazing is Cardano appears to be outperforming ETH, outperforming Bitcoin, outperforming Solana, Render, Sui, all of these other blockchains. And it's finally Cardano season. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that Charles Hoskinson is now on the ground building relationships, not only between crypto communities, but now also with policymakers ahead of the, again, presidential shift taking place in early January. Now, if we take a look here at the Bitcoin price charts here, it does appear to definitely be in the zone, um, reaching a potential cool off period. And what's crazy is, I mean, if we take a look at here, over the course of the last three weeks since the election, we've only had one, two, three, four red days. Today so far, slightly red, but only down a quarter of a percent. So I wouldn't consider this, you know, a full red day just yet, but it's really just been a hot crypto market and everything screams overheated. So we could potentially get a slight pullback. I'll definitely be looking to buy some of these dips here. Obviously not financial advice, but very positive and very reassuring here in terms of price action. Looking at the Bitcoin dominance here, I want to show something really interesting. So here we can see that the Bitcoin dominance on the 50 day moving average, we've now actually broken that particular average. And so this is taking a look here on the daily time frame or somewhat of a bigger time frame. And what we're going to be looking for here is a breakdown below the 200 day moving average, which is at around 57%. Again, if I zoom all the way back out here, you'll notice that this was actually the last altcoin season where Bitcoin dominance dropped nearly 44%. Now, what we're beginning to see here 
are some early signs that we may be getting a decline, right, in Bitcoin dominance, again, to at least the previous levels at around 40%, meaning a 34% drop. Um, but as more altcoins are sort of birthed in the crypto space, um, those are going to take some of the Bitcoin liquidity. So one thing that I want to quickly point out here is if I reset the chart, you'll notice higher highs when it comes to the tops on the Bitcoin dominance. But what you're going to notice is actually on the RSI, the relative strength index, lower lows. And so if you aren't aware, this is basically bearish divergence, meaning that we're expecting for the continuation to happen on the downside. So I've pulled up here a divergence cheat sheet. And if I get myself out of the way here, we are in the top right quadrant where price or not price, but the Bitcoin dominance has made a higher high. However, the relative strength index has actually made a higher low. So this is bearish. And so again, this is positive in the sense that if we do get a breakdown of the Bitcoin dominance, that that will actually result in altcoins like Cardano beginning to really outperform assets like Bitcoin. So I do want to quickly highlight that there. In addition, we are expecting for altcoin to officially kick off here. I think that we will see altcoins kick off as soon as Bitcoin is able to break above 100K and really hold there for quite a bit of time. But if you aren't aware, basically we have capital influx or profits. And right now, a lot of this is coming in from some of the big banks, the ETF providers, and then of course retail, which hasn't fully showed up just yet. Now, they typically dump all of their liquidity straight into Bitcoin, ETH, and stable coins. Once those assets pump, which we have seen Bitcoin pump making a brand new all-time high, we're then going to see Bitcoin and ETH rally. And then people now begin to take investment profits from Bitcoin and ETH, the two biggest market cap assets, and then basically start to roll those into altcoins. Now, in addition, people that are getting FOMO or who've been watching Bitcoin reaching all-time highs feel like they sort of missed the run. And now they're looking for an opportunity by investing in smaller market cap coins. So not only do you have the big investors who are re reshifting or reusing their profits to move those into smaller market cap assets, you also have sideline investors who are also looking for an opportunity to sort of catch up on what they may have missed with Bitcoin. And so that ultimately leads into altcoins um, rallying, which then perpetuates what is known as the highly anticipated altcoin season. Moving right on over, we've got the fact that the SEC's chair, Gary Gensler, aims to officially step down as Trump uh, signals a pro-crypto agenda. So Donald Trump has mentioned the fact that he wants to add Bitcoin to the U.S. reserves. He wants to basically buy a crypto-based company. And he's also been speaking with Brian Armstrong, the CEO of Coinbase. So really bullish here. Of course, he's mentioned that he's pro-Bitcoin, so it's RFK. And then all of the cabinet members that he's now assigning, including Elon Musk, um, are all super pro crypto. So it states here, U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission uh, Chair Gary Gensler is leaving his post after years of leading efforts to rein in the crypto industry. What's crazy is he was here and he basically bashed and broke down the entire industry. And as soon as crypto assets start to pump, he basically calls it quits. So he states that, or the article states that Gary Gensler aims to leave on January 20th of 2025. And according to a particular statement, he states that it was an honor of a lifetime to work for his fellow SCC staff. Um, this guy has done nothing but stifle innovation. Trump has actually vowed to undo everything that he's mentioned and that he wants to make um, the uh, USA the top crypto country for innovators and blockchain founders. So that said, moving over here, we have the fact that Cardano has now also hit a two-year high of 97 cents. Obviously, this is slightly dated. Cardano is now at $1.13 and analysts are now bullish. So it states here that Cardano has seen a 200% gain, reaching a two and a half year high. So this marks basically a huge change in the market sentiment. People are now bullish again on ADA, and that's for a couple of reasons, right? And I'll just quickly rehash them because I feel like I've mentioned them here on the channel before. But the biggest is obviously the fact that Charles is now being a lot more vocal, and he's now vowed to work with legislators in DC. I'm actually going to talk about the fact that he was just in D.C. two days ago. So definitely stay tuned for that. In addition, we have Cardano, which is UTXO based, and we have Bitcoin, which is UTXO based. And the fact that Bitcoin OS will allow for liquidity to shift in seamlessly from Bitcoin into Cardano. In addition, we've got Cardano partnering up with big names like NASA. We've got them partnering up with um, big wine agencies in Europe. 
And we just have a lot of really bullish builders here in the ecosystem. We've got tons of dApps, tons of DEXs, tons of DeFi protocols, Liquid officially breaking over $150 million. They've now rose up to the top of the ranks, being the top um, rated DeFi platform here in Cardano. And just a lot of RWA action and a lot of just super innovative platforms like Palmyra, Indigo. I could go on and on and on. But that's really why I think we're beginning to see this shift in sentiment and people finally becoming bullish on Cardano, not to mention scaling with Hydra, um, Ouroboros Paris, Ouroboros Leos. And then we've got ZK platforms like ZK Fold, as well as Midgard, which we're expecting to launch here in the ecosystem. So that'll do it there for the macro news bits there. If you do enjoy content like this, please make sure to smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by the channel and you want more content like this, looking at the macro markets and diving into Cardano, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please go ahead and leave those down below. Now let's jump right on in here into Cardano specific updates. I'll keep this relatively quick, kicking things off with the fact that Charles Hoskinson has recently just appeared on Bloomberg. And in the entire segment, all they were talking about was the fact that Cardano has officially outperformed Bitcoin to record highs. So some of the key takeaways here include the fact that Charles was emphasizing the importance of collaborating for the growth of the blockchain industry. And he's not only focused on Cardano, but he's talking about Bitcoin, ETH. He's basically vowing to fight for the entire ecosystem. I mean, I think it goes without saying Charles is a huge contributor here, a bright mind and a very thoughtful leader. He's actually just come back from his recent trip where he's been a completely changed person talking more about collaborating talking more about how we can step the entire industry forward and how we can onboard the masses. So I'll break this particular speech or this particular segment down in a separate video, but I did at least want to highlight the fact that he's given respect to some of these lawmakers and he's talking about how we can really begin to have constructive dialogue around crypto and blockchain based assets. Now that's not all. Charles has stepped it up even further heading to DC on November 20th. So we've got him here getting ready to head out over there, looking amazing, looking super sharp. And we can see that he's actually met with Tim Scott. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back to that particular screen there in just a minute. But he states here, great dinner with Senator Scott. America's best days are coming. So it seems like crypto will definitely be a powerhouse in this particular country. That said, if you've been accumulating, if you've been in the in markets and just understanding what the heck has been going on here, you will be rewarded. This is why it pays to be here when nobody else is here, because by the time that the crowds rush back, there's not that much opportunity left. So I want to thank you all here. If you've been a supporter or subscriber or just a contributor, if you like and share the content, it definitely does mean a lot. Now, I'm interested to hear a little bit more from Charles about what exactly was discussed. But again, we've got him with his chief of staff, JJ Seiler, meeting uh, Senator Scott. Now, jumping back here, if you're not familiar with Senator Scott, He's the U.S. Senator representing um, or from the state of South Carolina, where it states that the U.S. Senator Tim Scott, who's a Republican, is also a member of the Senate Finance Committee and the top Republican on the Senate Banking Committee. So interesting there. I'm going to have to definitely start to dive a little bit deeper into politics, but wanted to highlight the impact that Charles has had there on the ground, really making an impact. And I think that being reflected in Cardano's price action. Uh, what's also amazing, and I'll take a quick break here, is the Solana ADA chart. So I'm going to pull that up here, and I want to just show how Cardano has really been outperforming against Solana. And this goes to show, right, that you never want to chase a pump. So if I actually jump back in here, this is the ADA Solana chart. And what this is basically depicting is the price appreciation in an asset like Solana versus Cardano. And we can see here that over the course of the last, let's see, 500 days, Solana has been outperforming Cardano. But as this chart now begins to break down, what we're seeing is Cardano now outperforming Solana. So we've just broken through here on the weekly time frame through the 50 day moving average on this Sol ADA chart. And this is looking very bullish for Cardano. So could we see Cardano outperforming ETH? I think so as well. So if we take a look at ETH ADA here, there we go. So we've got ETH ADA. And so here, um, this is basically measuring how Cardano has been performing against ETH. And we can see that Cardano actually has been outperforming ETH to the upside as well. So jumping back over here, I do want to quickly touch on the fact that 
the Midnight team is now onboarded Vacuum Labs, as well as Check It Labs and FI Work in order to support their Midnight community and in order to basically speed up and ramp up the development of Midnight, a data privacy and data protection focused blockchain. Now, in addition to that, we have here, this is coming in from Dave, shout out to him, huge contributor here and a single stake pool operator in the ecosystem, breaking down the fact that the Cardano treasury has just hit $1.3 billion. Now, keep in mind, as the valuation of ADA continues to increase, that means that we don't have to pull out as much from the treasury in order to be able to get things done. Initially, there was a budget proposal when Cardano was at 30 cents to withdraw anywhere between 100 million ADA all the way to 300 million ADA. And in 17 days, the amount of fiat that we would have been able to pull out with that 100 uh, million ADA has now basically tripled. So that means that we can pull out 33% less ADA from the treasury and still be able to get the same amount of fiat. Now, this is only the very beginning of the bull market here, in my personal opinion, of course, not financial advice, meaning that if Cardano goes all the way up to, for example, something like $10, that will have to pull out relatively small amounts in order to still be able to do just as much as we would have been able to do when Cardano was trading at 33 cents. Hopefully that makes sense there for you guys. Moving right on over, we have the fact that the team from Input Output is also now partnering up with Sunday Swap in order to speed up the development in the engineering for Ouroboros Leos, um, which is basically, again, increasing the throughput here on Cardano. Moving right on over as we get ready to close things down, I want to highlight the fact that there's a new version of the draft constitution for Cardano. If you aren't aware, we've got the constitutional convention taking place in Argentina, Buenos Aires to be specific, in just about two weeks. So there's the tech forum taking place in Argentina right now. We've got big names and um, big persons here within the Cardano ecosystem attending that. And then right after that closes up, we've got about four days, I believe, for the Cardano constitution, which will be basically taking place in multiple locations in Argentina. Now, as we get ready to close out here, if you do want to go ahead and check out the draft version of the constitution, it's extremely lengthy, 37 pages, but it breaks down exactly what we can expect. And what I love about this is the fact that a lot of the community has actually contributed to this. So this is the power of decentralization. Anybody and everybody can come in here, put their hands to the plow and make sure that their voices is heard. And if they have any concerns that those are also addressed in things so important, such as the constitutional um, uh, documents. As we get ready to wrap up here, I've got the fact that Doom is launching on Hydra. So I'm actually going to mute this here. And I just released this yesterday, but I sat down with Trim Brousset, the uh, project manager for Doom, or excuse me, for Hydra, which will be operating or running Doom for a $100,000 tournament taking place all around the world. So all you basically need is an internet connection. It's free to join. And once you do join, there's going to be a preliminary round taking place on December 3rd, where you're able to play against some bots. And based off of those rankings, there's going to be a finale where it's going to be a one-on-one. -on -one, and I believe it's a 15 minute showdown between two players and they'll basically be able to go through a bracketing system. And so Trim and I broke all of this content down yesterday. If you want to find out more about it, I'll leave the link to this particular video down. But there's a $100,000 price pool on the line, and the finale will be shot in Vegas. So that'll do it here for today's video. I'll have more content here over the course of the weekend, but want to kick things off here with some relatively um, important updates pertaining to the price of Cardano, Bitcoin, and what the heck has been going on here with Charles Hoskinson doubling down and really stepping up here to bring the entire crypto and blockchain space forward as we begin to grow and hopefully shift the U.S. into a household name or powerhouse when it comes to blockchain and crypto adoption. That will do it here for today's update. As always, if you did, if you did enjoy this content, please make sure to smash that thumbs up. If it's your first time stopping by and you want more of it, consider subscribing. And last but not least, if you have any questions, comments or concerns, please leave those down below. That said, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.